time now for the exchange when we connect you with someone who knows all too well the difficulties refugees face. Neil Deng recently left a camp in Kenya, the only home he had known for the past 11 years. The South Sudanese refugee is now attending college in Canada against all the odds. He wrote an opinion piece for CNN.com urging the world to help all of the 82 million people forcibly displaced worldwide. He says, quote, more than anything, the world should know that we are not villains and we're much more than victims. We are humans. Neil Dang, refugee, writer and community activist, joins us now live. Neil, thank you so much for coming on. It's a powerful piece you've written for us at CNN.com. When you saw the tens of thousands of people leaving Afghanistan, while well, you yourself were uprooting your life from Kenya, the Kakuma, Kakuma refugee camp, and moving to start school in Canada, what was going through your mind? Uh, thank you so much, Lara, for having me. Excited to be here. You know, what, what was going through my mind was I, I think of my own story of fleeing my own country. You know, I think of the chaos I saw, you know, uh, at the airports. And that reminded me, you know, the first day in the refugee camp when I went to the camp manager office, you know, where there are so many different refugees uh, from, you know, all across Eastern African countries. You know, there are refugees from Ethiopia, where I was coming from, you know, there was refugees, you know, from Somalia. And we're all over, you know, crowded at the camp manager. Uh, compound, you know, everyone want to get in, you know, everyone want to be registered and everyone want to start a new life in the refugee camp. What does a refugee go through when you have to uproot your life from the only life you've known? In your case, you were born in Ethiopia because your family had fled the Sudanese civil war and then you went back to South Sudan and had to leave again and found your way in Kenya where you lived in Kakuma for 11 years. Was that that many upsets and the many times that you have to move your life to a different country and to find some kind of refuge in a, in, in a foreign place, what is that like? Uh, it, it's a very traumatizing experience, you know. Uh, you have to start a new life, you go to a new place, you know, where there's new culture, where there's new language. You know, the first day in the camp, you know, the officers were speaking Swahili and English. I speak very little English and I didn't know Swahili. It was very difficult, you know, you, you go to a school where kids speak a different language. You go to a community where the people have different cultures, you know, they have different ways of seeing things. And you have to adjust to all that new things, you know, new normals. And that was like a very traumatizing and life experience, especially for a child like myself. We have a lot of refugees in our neighborhood in Eastern Africa. Uganda is already home to the largest number of refugees in Africa, and they agreed to take in at least 2,000 Afghan refugees. But further down south, South Africa said no. They did not accept any refugees from this country. What did you think of that? What is your reaction? Uh, you know, I think the refugee crisis, you know, need every single person in this world. You know, I think you need all of us. Today we live in a world where we are more interconnected. You know, a situation in one country affects every single country in the world. So I think, you know, this is a global crisis that need a global solution. You know, and I think every single country has something they should do. And every single country, you know, should come in and step and help. You know, this should not be left to one country or two countries. You know, every single person, you know, should come and contribute. Because, you know, no one chooses to flee their country. No one chooses to flee their homes. You know, I never choose to flee Ethiopia. My dad never chooses to flee South Sudan. It can happen to anyone at a time. So when it happens, you know, I think it's high time, you know, we show humanity and welcome these people to our new homes. No one chooses to leave their country. Like the Somali poet Warsan Shere said, nobody leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You say in Definitely. your piece for CNN.com that I just don't want my story to simply inspire you. I want my story to encourage you to do something. What is it that you want people to do? Uh, you know, uh, the numbers overwhelm people, but I think, you know, every single person has something they can do to help. And, you know, I, I know that myself, you know, because I have so many people who come in to help me in my life, you know, getting into college in Canada, you know, uh, was, was a journey, you know, that bring a village together, you know, there are people from all across, you know, the United States, you know, Canada, Africa, who came in to help me, you know, find a new home here in Canada. And I think, you know, the most important thing that I tell people, you know, is that, uh, you know, don't know refugees from the media, don't know refugees from what politician tells you, don't know refugees from what even the UN agencies tell you, you know, no refugees. You know, go to your neighbor next. You go to your next door neighbor who's a refugee and talk to them. Know them at a personal level. Invite them for a cup of coffee. Get to know their personal stories. You know, you can you know help refugees adjust to your new community. You know, help them learn your language. You know, help them uh, know how they can access healthcare. You know, how they can register their kids for school or even also refugee in your home. You know, you can organize you know uh, uh, you know a fundraiser in your community to send a young refugee to college. You know, if you are a student, you can encourage your university. You know to 
you know, to sponsor refugee students. You know, myself, I've been able to sponsor by your own university, and I think there are many universities in the world that can step up to do that. You know, you can hire refugees at your company. You know, you can, you know, uh, organize a fundraiser, you know, for a local organization, you know, that is helping refugees. You know, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is now having a plea, you know, pledging countries, you know, to help Afghan refugees. You can hush your local politicians, you know, to be able, you know, to support policies that welcome refugees. You know, also you can vote for leaders that care and, you know, that will help, you know, in, in you know, responding to the refugee crisis. A lot of African refugees are beginning new lives in here in the U.S., but also in Germany, in France, in the U.K. and elsewhere. When you've moved places, what's been the most destabilizing thing and how do you want people to understand these people that are coming into their communities, especially here in the West? Uh, you know, as I said earlier, it's a traumatizing experience. And I think, you know, creating a welcoming space, you know, where people feel included, you know, where they feel they are part of the community, I think it's the most important thing that will help them, you know, adjust to their inner life. You know, it's hard to learn a new language. It has to learn a new culture. You know, it's hard to learn a new way of doing things. And by making your community welcoming, I think, you know, that creates a space, you know, where these people can thrive and contribute to the new communities. And we have seen all over the world, you know, refugees do not just come and sit and, and get things, you know, they come you know, work and contribute to the new communities. You know, we have seen that in the United States, you know, in many countries across the world. Congratulations on getting into here on university. I should have started with that in Canada. And you must be very excited to finally get to do this degree. Do you long for home? What do you hope to do once you graduate um, from this program? Uh, you know, as a kid, you know, my main dream was to become a journalist and, and be on BBC radio. You know, my dad used to have a small radio and he would listen to radio every single evening. And I would join him sometime. He would turn into BBC. I would start imitating the news journalists. And I say to myself that, you know, I would love to be a journalist one day so that you can listen to me on TV. You know, and I want to continue, you know, my advocacy, you know, to be able to tell refugee stories, you know, to show the world that, you know, we are not just victims or billions, you know, we are humans. And that is the most important thing. You know, we are people who just need a better life. You know, we're desperate for a better for a chance at, at a better life. You know, and I think that is what I want to continue doing, you know, to work with, you know, government institution to work with the United Nations, you know, to make sure that refugee voices are included, you know, in, you know, getting solution for challenges that face them. And you're already doing a fabulous job of that. You're an excellent advocate for refugee issues. And I, too, grew up with a small radio watching, uh, listening to news from around the world. And I do this now, so I'm sure you will do even better. Neil Deng, thank you so much for coming on. All the best. Thank you just for writing this and for making sure that this is in front of everybody's attention. Thank you so much for loving me, loving me, Larry. All right.